Hey everybody, welcome back. So I recently did a video on this uh, Korg DRV 2000. Uh, it wasn't working, it had no power, and uh, we replaced these two uh, regulators and uh, three capacitors. And we got it working, and uh, we also replaced the battery and put in a, a battery holder. And it's working fine, everything's okay. Uh, the only issue that it still has is uh, there's no lcd backlight okay the lcd works but it's uh, hard to see because there's no backlight so i thought we would uh try to fix that in this uh video all right so let me turn it on so you can see what i'm uh, talking about here so you can see the lcd is working but it's it's hard to see because there's no no backlight okay so if this room was dark you wouldn't be able to see it all right, here is the backlight power connector, and it's got two wires going to it. The yellow one is 125 volts AC, and we measured that in the previous video with my fluke meter. And the other wire just goes to ground that's connected to the chassis, okay? So let me unplug that. So it's got three pins. Uh, the middle pin is not connected to anything, okay? So I think what's happening here is uh, you got... 12 volt regulator here okay the one we replaced right there okay and that 12 volts is going in here okay and this is some type of inverter circuit okay you got a few resistors capacitors a transistor and a step up transformer and then it goes here and this steps it up to 125 volts ac so i think this is uh now, I don't know. I don't have a schematic, but I think it's some type of uh, relaxation oscillator. So they're just taking this 12 volt rail, converting it to 125 volts AC. And uh, we're going to check it on the scope in a minute because it, it may not be a perfect sine wave and it may not be centered around zero. So, you know, it could be, you know, the peak to peak voltage could be higher. Okay. So we'll check it just to see. So I think that's what they're doing here is uh, they're inverting it. And then this. You know this connects to there and, and you can see right here okay it just goes into the actual lcd where the backlight plugs into okay so let's hook it up to the scope and see what we what we get out of that connector all right so i got my uh oscilloscope connected to the first pin okay uh there's nothing on the second pin and then the third pin is the third pin to the right is ground and I've got the ground just going to the chassis right here. Okay. So let's turn on this. The Actually, the scope is on. Let's uh, turn on the power and see what kind of waveform we get. Okay. And we have 396 volts peak to peak. Okay. So about 400 volts peak to peak. And the frequency is uh, 2.82 seven kilohertz so 2.8 kilohertz okay so yeah I knew, I knew it wasn't a line voltage it's uh it's basically a dc voltage being inverted and that's what's powering up this uh backlight that's what's supposed to power up this backlight so so what we're going to do next is we're going to take this out uh and see if we can take it apart and remove the the backlight and let's see what kind of backlight it is first of all, and if we can get a replacement. And if not, then uh, we're going to try to modify it to replace it with a modern-day uh, LED backlight. And those usually run on 3.3 uh, volts DC, so we'll have to take uh, a rail from, from this regulator and bring power to the new one if we can use that one, okay? Let's start by taking this apart. All right, guys, here is the LCD removed. And uh, these tabs right here, we're going to have to twist them to make them fit through the holes so that we can remove the actual uh, LCD by pulling it through the holes. Uh, now, you got to be careful when you twist these tabs 
because uh, if you break one off, you're in trouble. Because these tabs pull the LCD tightly onto the board to make contact. So if you break one, you're going to destroy the LCD. You're not, it's not going to display the characters properly, okay? All right, so here comes the cover. Okay. And here is the actual LCD, and here is the backlight. Uh, it's very thin, and uh, this appears to be one of those EL phosphor backlights, uh, electroluminescent backlights. And uh, basically the way these work is uh, they get excited. The phosphors get excited with the current, and they light up. And I think I have a couple of these, so uh, let, me, let me look around and see if I could find one in my uh, stash. All right, so here is my backlight. And uh, yeah, it's a little bit bigger than this one, but we'll work with it, okay? Now I've got it connected here, okay? It's right here. And I'm gonna turn this thing on and let's see if it lights up. So let me uh, plug everything in. All right, I got everything plugged in. And we'll just leave that there. Okay, let's turn it on. Okay, I could barely see it. Let's uh, let's turn the lights off. There we go. Okay, it's uh, it's barely lighting up. Okay, let me turn it on and turn it off. Okay, so it's barely lighting up. It's not bright enough, but Maybe that's because it's so big. Let me turn it on and uh, measure the voltage and see if we get a drop. All right, I got my meter ready to go in AC mode. And I'm going to put this on here first. Okay, and then I'm going to turn it on, okay? Let's see if there's a voltage drop. 50 volts, see that? We went from 125 volts down to 50 volts. That's why it's not shining bright. Okay, so I think this panel is too big. Okay. And I think once, what, what we're going to do is we're going to cut this down to this size. Okay. This size right here. Once we do that, I think there will be less of a voltage drop and it should be brighter. All right. Now I got this from uh, Adafruit. And according to their website, you can cut them. As long as you don't cut it here so I'm gonna have to cut it this way okay like that okay and it should get brighter because it'll be smaller re less resistance and uh, the voltage should go higher so let's see how that works okay I'm gonna cut it up and uh, now when you're cutting these you got to make sure you got to do two things you got to make sure you use a sharp blade like uh, one of these, okay, or an X-Acto knife. Then you got to make sure that the cut ends, the ends that you cut, you put some kind of tape over them to cover them, okay? You can use Kapton. I like to use clear tape uh, so I don't block the light because if you leave it open like that after cutting it, you're going to short something out on the metal here, okay? So you got to make sure wherever you cut it, you, you cover it with tape. Okay, and your cut has to be done with a sharp blade uh, because if your your cut is rough, uh, you're going to see black spots everywhere, okay? So you got to make sure you cut it with a sharp blade and then cover the cut with some tape. So I'm going to cut this down to size to match this size here and uh, we'll come back and try it out, see if it drops less voltage and gets brighter. All right, I've made some real progress here. I've... Uh, Desoldered this, okay, and took this out. So I unsoldered that, took this out, okay, put this to the side. And what I did is I cut the other panel, same size, okay. And here is what's what's left over, can't be used, okay. But uh, so here it is. This is the new panel cut, and I put tape. On the edges okay because we don't want them touching the metal okay because we cut it there and uh, now it should be brighter 
and it should have a higher voltage than 50 volts because it's smaller okay so let's uh, turn it on and see what happens all right so here is the display and I'm gonna turn on the power let's see if it's brighter yeah looks brighter okay let's see oh yeah look at that much brighter and let's see if the voltage went up okay it was 50 volts let's see if it went up 83.7 AC all right so it went up so that's why it's brighter so by cutting it smaller we made it brighter because the voltage went up okay all right so now I'm gonna fit all that back in and uh, we should be good to go all right so I got it on here okay uh, I put some double-sided tape on the back to hold it now you got to make sure that it's not covering these pads and I, I think I need to cut it down a little bit right here because it seems to be covering the pad uh, but we'll uh, well maybe not we'll see okay now we got to take the glass and put it on okay and let's see and what you need to make sure is right where okay that starts there that has to go match up with that so let's just put it right there or else it's not going to display the, the characters correctly all right so that has to be perfect right there okay let's see mm. Yeah, I think that's fine. Okay. So I'm going to push this down so it doesn't move. And then I'm going to bend these clips back to hold it in place. Okay. So let me do that. All right. So I'm going to bend the clips. Now, once you have everything aligned, you got to push it down so it doesn't move. Okay. Because if it moves just a little bit and comes off those pads uh, or goes on the wrong pads, then it, it won't work. Okay. So let's. Uh, push it while I put the clips in okay make sure you apply pressure pushing it up I'm applying pressure to the glass okay that's fine two more That's fine. Okay. That's it. Nice and tight. All right. Now, let's plug it in and see if it still works. All right. So, let's see what we've got. I've got it hooked up to the data. I've got the power going here to these uh, clips. And then here... And plugged into there okay so now if we aligned everything properly we should get data and a backlight all right so let me turn it on there we go we have a backlight and we have data okay so it's working Okay, so that's it. So we can put this back in, and uh, we're good to go on this. We have a backlight. All right. All right, I cut off the Adafruit connector that it came with, and then uh, cut off the original connector and soldered them together, put some heat shrink tubing, and that's it. We're good to go. All right, so let's uh, put it all back together and give it one last try. Thank mm -hmm. you.